How would you react if what you thought was always true actually turned out to be propaganda? We're talking about the medical industrial complex. What if it's time to take a look at things differently? What if it's time to step outside the system? All that and more. Stay tuned. Welcome back to the Jeremy Ryan Slate program. I am your host, Jeremy Ryan Slate, the CEO and co-founder of Command Your Brand. Um, we help brands to, to combat cancel culture by placing them on the right podcast and new media. You could check out our brand new PR book, recently ranked number one on Amazon over at bestpodcastbook.com. Reminder, if you are brand new to this channel, to like this video, leave us a comment, and smash that subscribe button if you support liberty, freedom, and want to build a better future. Uh, we have somebody who's been on the show before, and we have somebody with him on the show that has not been on the show before. So I'm, I'm very excited for uh, this conversation is uh, we're going to look at taking the red pill again today and what that means. So uh, Dr. Jeremy Ayers and John Gusty, welcome to the show, guys. Thank you for having us. So yeah, I, you, I wanted to start with first and foremost, um, how did you two guys get connected? Because I know there's there's an interesting story to to how you guys are working together and how you got working together. So so how did you get connected, and, and what are you guys doing out there in the world? Well, uh, let, let me, J Jeremy. Let me let me let me take the first part, and I'll I'll toss it off to you because um, I was um, being being the um, the kind hearted anarchist that I am. I was a regular attendee at the Anarchapoco conferences early on. Uh, every February in Acapulco. And it was at one of those conferences that I was listening to um, another one of the speakers that um, my wife has been confined to an electric wheelchair for many, many, many years, uh, originally diagnosed with multiple sclerosis and um, figuring out her situation has been a bit of a project to say the least. Um, so I was listening to someone give a, give a, a talk and some of that stuff was resonating with me. And uh, I went back to the states and and sat down with my wife and said, "Hey, I want you to listen to uh, I want you to listen to this guy." And um, and she was listening to this this particular individual. And you know how um, on on various video platforms there'll be these. If you like this video, watch this video. Well, it was one of those recommended things. And my wife clicked on. Uh, I, I guess it must have been his pretty face. But my wife clicked on this 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 other um, person. Um, who uh, his name just happened to be Jeremy Ayers. And, um, and she came back to me and she said, the guy you sent me was, 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 was awesome. But I, I found this guy and I, I really like him. And so I, uh, I watched it myself and, and, and I, I liked what I heard as well. And so we reached out to him and uh, started out as a, a professional relationship, Jeremy um, helping my wife heal Um but it, that just quickly turned into probably one of the best friendships I've ever experienced over the years. Um, you, you know, you, when you when you just click with somebody and there's no there's no filter, there's no barriers. Um, you know, um, Jeremy Slate, I, I think you and I have. Uh, you know, I mean, I just it, it's it's one of those easy relationships. You know, I mean, right. I think just right right off the bat. I mean, you and I just just hit it off, and and. Uh, Jeremy's just been working um, uh, on my wife for many, many years, never gave up on her. Um, and over that time, we just this this incredible uh, friendship blossomed and we're both idea guys and um, we are both rabbit hole uh, dwellers. And there was no rabbit hole that um, I had been down that he hadn't. And uh, there was no subject that was taboo. And so we just really enjoyed conversations and and. Um, it, it became such that we had an idea to to put a book together to um, help um, others like us in various stages of becoming aware of this wacky, wacky world we live in. And uh, that book became The Red Pill Revolution, and it did really well. And it uh, turned into many, many other projects, some of which we're going to talk about today. But that's that's how Jeremy came into my life. And that's uh, that's how I remember it, Jeremy. <laughs> You yeah, well, they offered me some money, and I I took it basically as my story. No, no, I, obviously I'm joking. Um, <clears throat> my version's slightly different, but um, that uh, the the chap that was uh, uh, John uh, was listening to at uh, Anarchapoco uh, was was um, supposed to get me there, and it didn't it didn't work out. So it's it's kind of 
ironic that that they came back with you know speak to this guy speak to this guy and dawn got on the internet and uh found uh my worst interview ever <clears throat> with with this chap we're, apparently we're not naming his name but with this chap and and um you know she sort of went i want that one and john was like no 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 this is the guy she said no i want this one so she contacted me and uh, i've always prided myself in trying to reply the same day someone writes to me because i know the desperation and i know the usual blava that people go through trying to talk to doctors or get to talk to doctors and what have you so i replied <clears throat> and um you know arranged a professional consultation with with John and Dawn and I took a case history and I thought at the time this is complex but I reckon we got a really good chance of of resolving her what's labeled MS but as we will probably learn later on I I don't pay much attention to the labels I'm looking for the causes and and that's why I've been so successful in helping people we normally find the causes and are able to do something about it however um, after about a year, I'm terrible with lineal time. I think you'll understand when I say that. But about a year, it was obvious this is this is just not your, you know, quote unquote normal case. It's very complex. Things weren't going the way I'd expect them to. And essentially, you know, John and I and Dawn had formed a, a friendship, particularly me and uh, John, uh, that was getting very um, uh, close friendship. <clears throat> and and somewhere along that line. We both mutually agreed. Let, let, let's just forget the professional financial side, and I and I basically said I'm in for the long haul. You know, mm. I, it, 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 there's three outcomes. One, we'll get Dawn better, and we'll write the new Dawn protocol, and humanity will benefit from it. Two, um, we just stabilize her, and that would have been okay at the time. But still, people will benefit, and, and the worst case is we don't succeed, but still we'll learn something. Uh, and people will benefit. And so we've stuck to that agreement contract, the three of us. And, you know, I, I maintain that I'll be in for the long haul. And it's been it's been tough. You know, Dawn's case is very, I, I will say, the most complex case I've had in over 30 years. You know, but however, within that, the, the beauty of our friendship grew despite the challenges. And um, from that, we've, you know, a real kinship together. And as John said, we've gone on to co-author the Red Pill <clears throat> Revolution, and uh, and also a second book, the Red Pill Food Revolution. Um, and but most of all, John and I, it was just so obvious that we have to work the rest of our lives together on projects, and that's why we're here talking talking with you. He's kept me hidden from you for over a year, by the way, Jeremy. So it's taken me a year to speak with you. <laughs> Well, no, I, I heard about you in the beginning, but then I never heard anything else. So I, I, I don't know. I, I, I thought maybe that that lifelong, you know, thing ended in divorce or something, and I just didn't find out about it. But I, 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 I guess when, when when you look at it, guys, the the thing I find really interesting here, and this is what what Jeremy said, is you talked about, you know, Dawn's case and this diagnosis of MS, and it's. I think if you if you look at it, I feel like incorrect diagnoses happen a lot. Right. Like it happens a lot with a lot of people. And I think this is one of the major cruxes that we're kind of dealing with and, and looking at things. And I guess through a, a more red pill lens. And I, I guess when you look at it. How does the when the medical community looks at someone, I'm trying to think of the right way to ask this question. When the medical community looks at someone, why do they diagnose them the way they do? And, and why does that lead to a lot of people not getting better? I. It, 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 I, I think you'd probably. Did I ask that in the right way? I'm not like you yes. know. I think you get what I'm saying. What I'm thinking. Sure. <laughs> well, and I, for sure. And I, and I think we're gonna we're both gonna answer this okay. differently. But 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 let me just say this because because I don't come from a, a a medical or a health and wellness background. I come from the entertainment industry, the music industry, and in, in so lifelong um, career in the music industry. But I, uh, for the last 25 years, I've been thrown head first into learning about the, me the, not just the medical industrial complex over here, but then everything else, the natural health and wellness world and, and everything else over here and trying to distinguish between the two. But I will say this, um, within the medical industrial complex, and that's the people in the white costumes with letters after their names, um, they, let me put it this way. If, if you had a wall in your home 
that was compromised. And um, it, you could tell something was sagging or whatever. And, and a professional came in, um, a, a, um, a naturopathic approach or, or, or a, 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 a natural approach would be someone would look at that wall They'd figure out what the problem was. They would show you what the problem was and they would fix the problem. Um, and that problem might be termites in a small area. Okay. Sure. Um, what the medical industrial complex would do, they would come in and they would look at that wall and they would scan the wall and they would rub the wall and they would radiate the way they do all these things to the wall, except for go look inside of it. And then and, build a wall around the wall. And, and they would they would declare that the wall has some condition. They'd, they'd, they'd give you a name. It would be termatitis or something like that. And, and, and the protocol to deal with your prototitis or your termatitis would be something along the lines of burning the wall down or surgically removing the wall and putting in another fake wall. Or it, it would be it would be something extreme when um, the realistic approach would be you have termites in this one area deal with the termites and, 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 and even dealing with the termites, there's a, there's a natural way to go about that, or there's a very toxic way to go about that. So um, I, I think what most people experience is the, um, is, is the latter is, is being told that they have these um, conditions, these diagnoses, these diseases, um, when in fact, in reality, they could be something um, much simpler, much easier to understand, and much easier to to fix and and, and attack and and, and solve. <clears throat> yeah, I, I think even to begin to answer, it's an excellent question, actually. But to even begin I, I, to I, answer, I apologize it, that it wasn't as eloquent as I'd like, but I think you guys got the general concept of where I'm going. Yeah, with we it. <laughs> we got it, and ho and, and hopefully the audience is going to enjoy what we're going to say. But I think before I even begin. Now, I could actually lecture a whole day on that question, but before I even begin, I think it's really important for, for your listeners to understand, you know, I'm 50, just turned 55. Over 30 years, I've been learning and doing what I do very successfully. Uh, I think it's very important that I didn't wake up, and people that I respect and work with me, we didn't wake up one day and say, let's pick every controversial subject possible that most people think opposite of and let's pick that because that's going to make us more money and socially, you know, uh, uh, more acceptable to people. You know, because when we do talk, it's usually the opposite to what most people understand the way things are. <clears throat> now, when you, <clears throat> excuse me, when you talk about diagnosis, um, diagnosis comes, well, all words are made up of other words, and diagnosis is three. It's diagnosis. Di means two, ag means not, and gnosis means to know. It literally means two people not knowing what the hell's going on. And that's very advantageous if your philosophy is business. And, and, and the point I want to get to is <clears throat> that the philosophy of these arts of medicine is what is key in all of this. Because, you know, I know there's many good people working in what would be understood as the allopathic medical system. You know, I call it the pharmaceutical industry. I just dropped the P. What it is, but I know there's very good people in there that, that that would be offended by some of the things I say. But they don't. Most of them, in my experience, although many of them are reaching out to us now since the COVID uh, uh, years, but um, most of them don't understand how modern medicine came into uh, being the dominant business model in the entire world. And I, I won't go into too much of that today. But but I can absolutely tell you that that it comes from the Flexner report just after. The Federal Reserve was also uh, reinstigated, and it was set up as a business model to take over the world, and it's the biggest <clears throat> business currently on the planet. And if you doubt that, um, you only have to ask yourself, in whatever country you're listening in, in the last 50, 75, 50 years, has the population got healthier or sicker? And everybody knows the answer. It's that every country is the same. It's not just sicker, it's way sicker. So then you have to go to the next question, which is the basis of true journalism, which is who benefits and follow the money. And so when you start looking at it like that, diagnostics, uh, which is why I could talk all day on it, is actually a very good way of beginning a huge money stream. 
And in my experience, not only are there enormous errors in so-called diagnostics, but also it, it doesn't tell you anything. You know, my, my wife, when I met her 14 years ago, was still terminally ill after going through all the horrors of modern oncology with breast cancer, surgery, radiation, and chemo. And actually, it's the chemo was the only time she felt she was going to die. <clears throat> Excuse me. And of course, 14 years later, she's, she's alive and thriving. And I can tell you just one of the aspects of her dis-ease, which is where the word actually comes from, <clears throat> not at ease, was mercury fillings, amalgam fillings, leaking mercury through vapor that she was breathing into her lungs and going into her breast, not least the underarm deodorants that she'd used for 25 years that were going directly into the breast because that's where they go. Where do you think they go? And drink consuming a lot of aspartamine, uh, the artificial sweetener in Diet Coke, thinking that that was better than sugar. So there's just three things, before I go into anything else, that were actually causing the condition commonly known as breast cancer. So do you see where I'm beginning to go with that? And the philosophy no, is really I, important. I, I do. And I guess the, the it's because, Jeremy, there's so many threads to this. It's, do you know what I mean? Like this, there's I, I've i I've, I've dove so much into this because you look at it even like the insurance industry now too like it's 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 kind of it's out of control i don't know if you've ever read the book uh, deadly spin by wendell potter he used to work for um i think it was cigna or one of the insurance companies and he kind of like came out and was like yeah. so do you know how we actually like decide what we're going to pay for and i feel like if you look at it your premise is correct like you know the business is kind of primary to the to the actual situation of treating people and helping people. And then you also yes. look at, you know, kind of, well, who's paid for the medical schools since the turn of the century. And I guess when you look exactly. at it, where do we, where do we go to handle the problem and what is our problem? Like, where does it come from? Don't, don't. I think, I think the source of the problem is, is just social conditioning. We've all been conditioned since birth um, to blindly look towards and trust this corporate system, um, the allopathic medical industrial complex. Um, it, it's, it, do you see, especially, you know, since the, the wackiness of 2020 forward, we all see how, um, it's it's religious level devotion to that model and and, and so and there's a lot of people a lot of us are socially engineered to um look at the flack a lot of us got for having the gall to question or even be the slightest bit skeptical of that industry in any way shape or form and they're like name another industry that has that sort of immunity from any sort of scrutiny or or whatever but uh, so so i think the source of the problem is is the conditioning and the the social manipulation that all of us have have been put through and being able to recognize just like with anything else just like with let, let just take something easy like like food if you're going to be healthy you have to start taking food that whole topic very seriously and it's yes. not just what you eat it's how you eat it when you eat it why you're eating it um, where's it coming from? All, all of that kind of stuff. And, and, but there are some basic tenets, like using food is still as the example. You know for sure that if, if you are taking your food seriously, we all know that fast food is not beneficial to you. Okay. So maybe the answer is to start thinking about some of these other corporate pieces like the medical industrial complex as fast food healthcare or health knowledge. You know, you, you wouldn't go to McDonald's for dietary advice. Um, I would say the same goes for, I wouldn't go to the, to any hospital expecting to be healthy or treated in a healthy way. I wouldn't go to a, a medical professional period and expect that my well-being is is front and center. Now, to what Jeremy had said earlier, that is not to say there are wonderful, well-meaning, beautiful people that work yes. in that industry. 
And sure. just like there are wonderful, well-meaning, beautiful people who are public school teachers. Yeah. There are wonderful, beautiful people who are policemen. Correct. Okay? But those are all, all of those are thankless they're, they're thankless professions. And I think most of the people that get into those professions get into it with the best of intentions. But once they're inside of it, they realize the teachers can't teach or discipline. They're not allowed to. The policemen can't police. They're not allowed to. The, you know, the, 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 the people inside the medical industrial complex, I mean, there are countless, countless examples through history of people who have actually been persecuted can I jump on that with? Yeah, yeah, can yeah, I jump yeah, on absolutely. that with? Uh, I think <clears throat> I think it's important to know that. And I, I have are, a note too. I'm going to write down here so I don't forget to ask you guys in a second. But go ahead, Jeremy. Right, that, John's absolutely right. You know, it, it is not us against them. Um, it's actually a philosophy against a philosophy. But there are wonderful people in there that just don't know what they don't know. Um, uh, but what I think most people don't understand is that. The whole allopathic medical system, which is no doubt it's a business model. People that don't know what that means, could you just explain what that word means? Because some people may not know. So so allopathic basically is the treating the symptoms. You're looked at as a bag of chemicals and something's gone wrong that needs to be fixed. And that's that's why essentially the treatments that have developed are under the banner of cut, burn and poison. You know, they might Mm. be skilled trauma. But it's cut, burn, and poison. And, and what I mean by that is cut is obviously uh, surgeries, and uh, I absolutely accept that sometimes uh, skilled surgery or controlled trauma is necessary to buy time to do longer healing protocols. Uh, I will never accept radiation as a medicine uh, or a diagnostic tool because we all know what radiation causes, so I don't see how it can ever be used as treatment. Um, and you can't be deficient in a pharmaceutical drug so you know let's sort of start there that's where it's come that's where it's come from but i think most people don't realize that when they go in to speak to a a doctor that the way the system is now automated is they have to come up with a diagnosis which is why i started there and once you get that label insurance code to put in the computer correct and and it is it is so dangerous that label once it goes in the system because the doctors are restricted in fact everybody below them is restricted to operate what the sort of computer says you're allowed to uh, uh operate you, you 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 can't even talk about vitamin c for example you couldn't even suggest that maybe you should look at something else because it's not allowed and therefore if you seek a second opinion thinking that that will be a, a very good thing in a, in a in a traumatic or worrying case they have to work within the same box. That's why so many people are going abroad into Mexico and places like that where it's a little bit more flexible. But basically, they've been put in a very controlled corporate profit box of, of treatments. And I want to say one more thing, Jeremy, that's very important. Mm-hmm. Um, the, 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 the flag that's always been waved is this evidence-based medicine. And I just laugh. When I hear this, because if you speak to true scientists and we've interviewed many of them, again, corporations have taken over science It's corporate science. You know, there's 95 percent of the alleged science out there is nonsense. It's rubbish. Also, people don't read it. At best, they read the title and the conclusion. They don't read in the middle. And the reason it's set up that way is because whole industries rely upon government and pharmaceutical and educational grants for it. So you can't bite the hand that feeds you. But the whole the whole problem is it's it's profit before people, and it needs to become people before profit again. Well, look at what just science. I mean, science, um, and I and I think this is. John, a good I believe look. the accepted term now is the science. That's the science, uh, <laughs> capital T, capital S. Um, science. I mean, I think this is a good reminder for all of us. Science is a discipline. Science isn't a science isn't a company, science isn't an organization. Sci- science is a discipline. I it's, think it's, even that like not, not even just a discipline like it's a practice, right? And when people yeah. hear the word practice, they don't have the right definition. Practice coming from practicum, right? It's something you actually do, yeah. right? Like it's you're always trying to work and get better at it. But continue, yeah. John. No, well, like I'm saying it is 
even the term the science, I mean, there's, we're surrounded by these arrogant terms, the science, the news is another one. You know, how arrogant would it, is it of any organization to refer to themselves as the, the news? I mean, what's news to you might not be news to me or valuable to you or valuable to me. So, so news to, 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 I don't know that there's, there's so well, it's, also an, oxy, said, it's you, also an oxymoron, you, you, you know, trust the science is an oxymoron yeah. because the very basis of science is don't trust the science, challenge the science until there's Ch better science. science. And, and, and let me let me just get in two quick things about yeah. science. Again, it's a discipline. It is forever. It's never settled. Yes. I mean, the essence, the essence of that discipline is very simple. It's prove it, you know, prove it. To, to all to anyone and any, everyone that that needs it needs to be proven to prove it and always be open to being wrong because because nothing is ever settled you all, we only know what we know at the moment 10 minutes from now we we might learn something significant that changes everything well, I, I actually so i wrote down one note when you were talking a few minutes ago john um and uh, i said here how would you react if you found out what you always thought were facts were actually propaganda and I think it, it's interesting to look at that because I think like the medical industry as a whole, a lot, a lot of what we have as accepted facts is a lot of propaganda. And let me, let me explain, right? If you look at it, um, you know, you'll, if you ask somebody about like, you know, you know, a doctor and they'll be like, oh, they make so much money when it's like, if you look at it now, like a lot of them actually don't, and, you know, a lot of money is actually in the insurance companies and investors in those and investors in the pharmaceutical companies where, where doctors are really being, you know, great doctors being minimized now. They're not actually, you know, able to even pay off their student loans, a lot of them, because of what they're paid. So you have, you have that as kind of one of the, the big, you know, lies that we're told. Um, and you have the other one, um, too, like I know health, uh, healthcare, I guess, is different for you guys in, in the UK, but for here, us here in the US, um, it's changed a lot over the years. And if, and if you're right of center, you're supposed to believe that public health healthcare is bad. But if you're left of center, you're supposed to believe that private health care is bad. And I think the interesting, like, actual solution right. is, we need to figure out, like, we have to look at the cost of, well, if we didn't care for people, like, how much worse are we making in the future? So I feel like or there's perhaps. so many lies that we're told and we're forced to believe so we can't actually come to a consensus on how to solve things. Or perhaps... But you, but you, sorry, John, that, can that I just help? get in here? Because it's quite important. Yeah. You know, the, the question is wrong from the get-go. That's what I was going to say. it though. isn't yeah. health care. And yeah. so yeah. Th th this is how the people have been duped. Um, it's sick management care, and that's profitable. The old Chinese uh, philosophy was you pay your doctor uh, to keep you well, and you stop paying them when they're sick. You know, and if, if we reintroduced that philosophy, there would be a revolution overnight. You know? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, so, that's, that's a, uh, go ahead, John. Yeah, well, I, I was just – that's exactly where I was going with with that whole dynamic. Is is it it blows my mind to this? Now, can you day. turn your head a little bit towards the mic? We're not hearing you, man. It, it it blows my mind to this day the responsibility of of our of one's health. How so many of us are just will just without question offload that responsibility to a third party. I mean, the yes. the, the, the responsibility of my health is my should be my number one priority because I am no good I'm no good to my wife, my children, my friends, my my neighbors. I'm no good to anybody if I'm unhealthy and or dead. So so I need I, my, my I can't even I cannot even fathom for a minute offloading the responsibility of my health to anyone else, e even to one of you guys. And I, I love you guys, you know, but, but I would not, I would never go, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to offload that my, my health responsibility to the, to the, to the two Jeremy's, you know, I'm going to let them handle it and let so them I, tell me what to do. I guess from that perspective, like this is a huge problem guys. And I think when you look at it, there's, there's so many different threads to it, but I guess, where do you start to handle it? Like, is it the removal of corporate interest? Because, you know, 40 years ago, they even told us what was in the food pyramid. Like, is it corporate interest first? Like, like, where do we even start to kind of unwind this ball I think of twine? Removing the corporate piece is apps is, is essential <laughs> to so solving so many of our, our issues socially and, and just culturally. I mean, you, please, please understand that, that when, when I say corporation, a corporation is a, commercial entity and there are there are only two 
things people should ever remember about corporations. One, the, the, the only reason you would form a corporation is to avoid responsibility. Here, I mean, if we're being honest, you form a corporation to, of, to, to create another entity who takes on the liability. Okay. So, so, so first and foremost, people form corporations to avoid responsibility. Also, a corporation's only, only like duty to itself is to be profitable, is to, is to continue. And so you, you have got, you, you've got by n the nature of what they are, these legally evasive, um, self perpetuating, um, entities that are not focused on you, me, any of our well beings. So removing that, that, that layer from everything is always going to make things better. And Jeremy, I'm, I'm interested to find out from your perspective, since, you know, you've, you know, as you mentioned, you know, over 30 years in treating patients, like what things do you run into? Like, cause I'm, I'm interested from like a, from like an insider perspective, like, you know, your goal is to get somebody well, it's to help somebody. And what barriers do you run into? And like, how do we change those things? Right. So if, again, it boils down to philosophy. My job's to get rid of you in the nicest possible way, not keep you. Right. That's, that's the philosophical change. The, the, the origins of the word doctor means teacher. And so if you're sick, it means that you've come off the path that nature uh, designed you for. And so what has happened is a major educational, because these corporations have taken over the television, that's what I call it anyway, they've taken over the educational system. It's, it's a complete monopoly. And so we've got several generations who don't know how, how stupid they are, really, because they've been educated. You know, if you talk to some of uh, the great great grandparents, you know, they did things very differently and looked at things very differently with health. But what we have then is an educational problem. So when someone comes to me, um, I take a one hour case history where we go through their life at looking at what has occurred and when things started to go wrong. And so it very quickly becomes clear where poisons, where chemicals, where stresses, where traumas, so on and so forth. Dentistry, I've already you know, mentioned earlier on. De dentistry is sure. a necessary yeah. evil since we went away from our natural diet and introduced grains and sugar. It's a necessary evil. It's controlled trauma. But mercury fillings, when the first mercury filling was put in, in Paris in, I think it was 1860, you had the first multiple sclerosis diagnosis in Paris. Okay? Mm -hmm. So you start to see where did things happen and where did things change, and then you're able to give it back to a human being and go, look, this is what's been likely causing your problems, and this is what your body's been trying to do to keep you alive. Either it's been trying mm -hmm. to get rid of it through the skin, which is like eczema and psoriasis, for example. And if you think about that, and there's never been a psoriasis or eczema I haven't been able to resolve, you know, most doctors will treat the skin. But it's coming from the inside mm -hmm. out. Ask anyone with eczema. They'll it's scratch digestion and scratch. a lot of times and things like that, isn't it? Absolutely. But it's, the skin's the largest organ of detoxification. And they scratch and scratch till it bleeds. And the moment it bleeds, it's like, oh, utter relief because the poison can come out, right? So once we take these case histories and show people, we're basically de begin a deprogramming them of what they thought they understood illness and disease was and start to show them what's really causing it. And so they, they suddenly begin to see that they can do something about this and that the label that's often been uh, ascribed upon them is actually not correct. Because, you see, if you give someone a label, you have whatever autoimmune or terrible disease, they jump on Google and they're all dead. And they're, they're just terrified, right? And it's the best way to stop someone critically thinking when they're in fear. And so, of course, they run into the arms of the modern health, well, the modern allopathic uh, uh, medicine system, which essentially is all they can offer is cut, burn, and poison. And so a lot of people think the medicine's good medicine because it takes away their symptoms. So they feel mm -hmm. better. But it actually makes you more toxic, and the disease manifests in other areas, which rarely do they make the connections until they speak to me. Jeremy, I'm, I'm, I'm interested, like, I guess, looking at that, 
can you reform the system given this education problem or is it come down to creating something outside of the system? Like what, is, I guess, what does that yeah. look like to actually handle it? Cause it's a huge problem. Well, we're, we're at that stage, I believe now, because I, I think the COVID years and I, um, we probably don't want to talk about COVID as a whole episode in itself of what it was and what it wasn't. But the, sure. the facts are it has created a lot of people in the medical system and outside the med thinking very differently and very angry and very frustrated and very lost. And so they're looking for what is a better solution to what they're, what they're in. And I, I believe no army can defe defeat a thought whose time has come. And I, that's why we wrote the Red Pill Revolution, because we, we're not interested in some violent traditional revolution. We're interested in a consciousness revolution where free speech uh, the ability to explore ideas uh, is encouraged and welcomed, and I believe humanity will will very quickly uh, find uh, find their way when it is unleashed. That's why our company is the Human Unleashed, because you but, but you'll understand this, Jeremy. You know, most of what it's taken me thirty years to find what I found because it's very very guarded, and when you start to get into these areas, you're usually uh, uh, aggressively. Uh, try to put away from that. People, you know, many doctors that I've learned from got put in prison for the crime of healing people. You know, it's a very protected system, and so the only way forward is podcasts, is books, is membership sites. I mean, people are on YouTube, although most of that's getting banned on Rumble, and are finding solutions outside of "quote unquote" the system already. There's, there's, no, there's. It, it is, in my opinion. Uh, uh, absolutely pointless to try to reform the existing system it, it, it's 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 like walking into a sushi restaurant and demanding a taco i mean well it's the same thing i've said about the political system right like we can't go we can't go back 100 years it's already passed like now we got to move on from here yeah and 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 we're interesting analogy i think we're seeing the i think we're seeing the um c further collapse of what we're calling the medical industrial complex. I think we're seeing the further collapse of the political industrial complex. I think we're seeing, we're definitely seeing the collapse of the celebrity uh, comp, the industrial complex. I mean, that's coming crashing down like daily. Um, but, but on the other side of all of this wreckage is, in my opinion, some beautiful opportunity. Uh, we, people just have to, wrap their head around the very simplistic truth that we don't need them for so many things. Let me just simple things like, like look, how many human beings do you know that can get their own water without some third party corporate interest involved? Not many. We're the I, only my three year old wants me to believe that she cannot get her own water unless I get it for her. <laughs> but you know, I mean, I mean, most people, it, it falls from the sky, springs from the ground, and we we are the only life form that I'm aware of that puts some sort of a paywall or or commercial system around the the, the main element that we need to live. No other no other life form does that. So so when when regular normal um, human beings in mass start going. I don't need to to buy my food from them. I don't need to go to their schools. I don't need to to, to listen to their medical stuff. I there there are other ways to do just about everything. Uh, the the in fact, there's so much wisdom in in the ancient ways of doing things. We don't have to go back ancient. I mean, look at how much more self-sufficient and healthy and wise, just our grandparents' generation, or maybe the generation before that, you know, the, the, just the, they, the food that they ate w w was, was more real. The, 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 the life that they lived was, was more, um, was was more naturally centric, you know. It, it wasn't. They weren't. They weren't bathing in in electric radiation everywhere. Like like we. I mean, it just it was just. So, sometimes, um, sometimes I think we in mass mistake um, this. What I guess what we call advancement, uh, progressiveness, um, 
as 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 actually going forward, but it's I, I think in a lot of ways it, it, it's just the opposite. As as so many things are, what we call technology seemingly making things um, progress, they're actually regressing. And, and, and so and so you know our our grandparents, our grandparents' parents, those those generations lived, in my opinion, a much healthier, a much simpler, a much more fulfilling existence. And we we kind of need. I, I don't think we need to go forward. I think we need to go back. And it almost feels like in 2024, we're in a, we're in a race to see how many more um, radiation producing pieces of technology we can strap to ourselves as well. Um, you know, take take your Apple Watch and strap it to your head then at this point in time. But I guess, you know, looking at it, guys, like like we see this problem, we, 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 we have a good idea of how we got here. We have a good idea of what the solution looks like. But for, for people listening, like if you guys could give them like just a couple pieces, pieces of advice to like go away from here today, I guess. How would you direct them or what would you tell people to do kind of based on like what we've discussed here today? Yeah, uh, I'll That's, start there. Okay, so, so I mean, it's, and, and this is really powerful because I, I love these sort of seeds. So I'll just go through a few of them because they, they, they really do go into people's consciousness. It's something they can look at, uh, um, you know, come on our membership site if you like and, and, and learn, learn it all. But um, the first thing is, you know, most people have heard it you are what you eat. It, it's actually we, be more accurate to say you are the difference between what you eat and what you excrete. And then we have to add in brackets food versus feed because most people are not eating food. We're at a point in history where we actually have to now define what food is. And then the other adage to that one is what? why are we the only animal that doesn't know what to eat? So we can get into that another day as well. So that's one. So we start there because most people don't even know what food is, Jeremy. And I know you know this. And, and, and in America recently, it's still shocking what people are putting in their mouths and, uh, uh, and considering as food. But it's really feed and very, very toxic for you as well. The next thing, next seed is you're not sick. You're toxic. And that's tox hyphen sick. Uh, we've never had more chemical exposure in history than we're exposed to right now. And we could just read off so many of them. Um, but the, the, the probably the most dangerous of those currently is artificial light and uh, EMF radiation, which people are yes. absolutely bathed in. And if you look at something like India, which is a sort of peasant, uh, mostly peasant country, uh, they haven't, their food hasn't changed much in a hundred years and diabetes and autoimmunes were kind of increasing slowly, but about 10, 15 years ago, it went up vertically. And there's a, there's a clear reason. They went from being peasants and farmers into being call centers and technology centers. So they're all sitting in front of screens with Wi-Fi, and that's the EMF and the artificial light. And most doctors won't even know what I'm talking about. You know, And, and if you go into a modern hospital, it's EMF and artificial light nightmare. I mean, the chances of healing in a modern hospital are, are pretty pretty low. So we, we start with those concepts and the most powerful one of all, and I know it will sound shocking to some people that have lost someone or, or, or are currently unwell, but your body doesn't know how to work against you. It's not made that way. You know, if you cut yourself and yes, sometimes you need itching and help, but, but if you cut yourself and you're a complete dumbass and don't do anything about it, the body immediately still goes about trying to clot it and start to repair those tissues. That's its default program. And it's no different with any other quote unquote labeled disease. It is trying to preserve life. The key is finding what elements have caused you and your body to start to function in this certain way and identify them, remove them, and uh, nurture the body back to health the way it was designed. And the way it was designed was to be outside in natural light working, eating real food, uh, and having a lot less work. You know, we're not insects. We've been turned into uh, human doings as opposed to human beings. And so the whole plethora is quite simple when you look at it and start to remove the fear of the labels. Yeah, there's one more thing you could do as well. You could go to one, one, one could go to naturally better for you.com. And there you're going to find, uh, you're going to find a, uh, several things. The first of which, um, and, and, and 
I hope this doesn't sound like a sh shameless sales pitch, but it it's about as honest as I as, as Jeremy and I can 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 put it out there. Um, there is a if you've got fifty cents a day and ninety days, um, there is an amazing protocol program um, there for you, and you will get an education um, very very quickly in in three months time. You 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 can you can. The, the knowledge share is is pretty humbling, but on top of that, there's a community of people there, and and this is where like you know it, those of us that think in dollars and cents, um, fifty cents. I mean a day. I mean you you tip your your barista you know, four or five times that um, for your overpriced coffee. Most of you, most people do. I um, just make it myself, John. <laughs> yeah, but, but but there's a community of people there twenty four seven all around the world. And that is the best way to learn is from real people doing real things. And, and so definitely uh, look, look, just take a look at Naturally Better For You. Consider being part of the protocol. But even if you don't want to do that or can't financially do that, there's some freebies there. Um, the coolest and my favorite is it's a free download. It's the anti-dependency guide. And it is chock full of many, many things that any of us can do today, real life things to just take back um, every little bit of control and sovereignty we can take back for ourselves is a step in, in, in the right and healthy and natural direction. And, and that guide is loaded full of it. So that you, there's, there's that, there's a free download of that there for you. There's also the, uh, have you been shot uh, post vax Detox protocol, which is uh, you know, uh, still very, very relevant. Um, it's saving um, lives. It's 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 a touchy subject. Yeah, it's 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 a it's a touchy subject, but there's a lot of people out there that that may possibly out of fear made some some decisions uh, with, with their body, and there's been some things put in their body that um, there are there are options and there are things that can be done to 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 deal with that. And so that, that protocol is, is, is there for you. It's free. It's a free download. And, and, uh, you, you have our promise. We do not, uh, we don't get your email and spam you. We, we will only reach out when we've got something of value, uh, to, to either give you or tell you about. So, um, naturally, let me, let better me add to that, John. Got, um, yeah, let, let, let me add to that. Cause I'm very, not shameless. I'm very proud because I can't help people, uh, everyone one-to-one. -one. And so, I started a membership site two years ago to to teach what I've learned in 30 years to people all over the world. And I was terrified, actually, of starting a membership site because I thought I was going to unleash a mental asylum because I know how much trauma is also involved in, in the modern-day dis-ease processes. But the opposite has happened. So myself and another colleague, Graham Norbury, who also wrote The Red Bull Revolution, we, we do, I think there's over 50... 30 minute vlogs of us walking in the beautiful Lake District, which is a part of England, which is just stunning, talking about uh, many subjects with lots of English humor and lots of wisdom, I hope. But the protocol and the community and the live Q&As week, we've just seen worldwide so many conditions healed that normally I'd have to do one to ones with. And that's the point. You asked, how can we change it? It's education. Well, <laughs> my first mentor, Harry Hawes, was pre-internet. And he said, you'll go bankrupt trying to educate people. And I said, but that's the job. And so where technology is great is the potential to reach people all over the world and teach them what made them sick and what can help them uh, heal and get better. And so I'm very proud of, of, of the membership site. And naturallybetterforyou.com is an is a earl that we've picked so people can really remember it and find us. But I hope to see you in there. Yeah. yeah. And every person that every person that can that can learn how to take care of themselves can then teach others how to take care of themselves. And and that's really at the end of the day, that's what Jeremy and I are trying to do is, is just empower as many people with um, all of this beautiful knowledge that that exists out there. We're just trying, you know, we we, we haven't done anything special. We've just tried to put it all in, in, in one space and share it because, um, you know, that it's 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 real people helping each other and teaching each other. That is how that's the path forward. That's the only path forward it is, is to not is to not be slaves and sheeple to the the, the, the corporate structure. 
It's uh, naturally better than number four you.com. And uh, John, you'll have to let me know next time you're in New Jersey because uh, you may never want to go to a barista again. People rave about my coffee. So uh, well, you, know, you guys will have to let me know next time uh, you're in New Jersey. But thanks for hanging out today, gentlemen. And once again, everybody, that's naturally better than number four you.com. Reminder, guys, if you're brand new to this channel, like this video, leave us a comment and smash the subscribe button if you want to support Liberty and make a bigger impact out there. Thanks for hanging out today, everybody.